I'm glad that uh, Mike B decided to go down to 155 because I don't think there would have been any other convincing me to do a 155 fight. But when they said, hey, Mike B's at 155, so if you ever want to fight him, we're going to have Because Frank and, and Drac have always said 155, but I'm you know, a bodybuilder, powerlifter at heart, so I was like, I'm not going to be that small. So when I heard he was at 155, I was like, you know, see if we can get that fight at 155, I'll drop at 155. We pushed for it and we got it, so I was like, bet 155, and man, I feel better now at 155, faster and stronger, and the things I've had to do to get to this wig has got me more in shape. Man, everybody's going to see a different Jonathan. I'm, I'm just going straight to the top of this wig. I know that now. I can feel it. I feel good. I've been begging for this rematch for like four and a half years since he beat me. So we're, we're coming. We're good. You know, I went on a 4-0 win streak right out the gate with great knockouts. Uh, you know, we had the five second for Legacy. Um, you know, I was, I was finishing fights all in the first round. Uh, so we were really coming on top. So we got a title shot for Legacy. That was, should have been my moment, you know, to win the title and then take the next step up into to roll with the big boys. And man. I made some mistakes on that one. <laughs> My life was a wreck. I was partying. You know, I had uh, just really bad people in my life. You know, just mainly, mainly a, a girl that I was messing around with. Wasn't doing me any good. It wasn't about what I had going on. It was what about well, where am I going to take her this weekend? You know what I mean? So I didn't train hard for that fight. You know, I got myself in a certain situation where I was going to get evicted from my apartment. So uh, I had to, like, borrow money against the money that I was supposed to make. Win, lose, or fail, you know, you get a purse. Uh, so I borrowed money against that. Right after I did that, the next week, I broke my ribs. So we stopped sparring. Two weeks after that, two weeks out of the fight, I broke my hand. So then I just stopped throwing a right hand. On top of, I wasn't training properly to begin with. I'm partying every week, and you don't party during a fight camp, man. You stay focused, you go home, you eat your meals, and you rest. I'm partying, screwing up, everybody. Thank God Frank loves me, and Wes and them are behind me no matter what, because I was messing up big time, and just didn't, you know, and wasn't taking it seriously. I, I was defeated before I even went against them, and then everything that happened, the weigh-ins, I, you know, I was keeping my composure, but in my head, I'm like, I got a broken right hand, and this is my money maker. My ribs hurt, so if I stretch, I haven't sparred in four weeks. I put in a pathetic camp because my head was somewhere else, but I owed money. There was no backing out of the fight with all those injuries, so we did it. He smoked me. First round, TKO. And I was walk through the park for him. I did literally when he took me down. In my mind, I was like, "Hey, whatever, just get this paycheck and get out of here." He's about to finish you in, you know, however many seconds. And he did. He handled me, no doubt about it. He beat the crap out of me. Excuse my language, uh, but he beat the crap out of me. It that took a piece of me inside, knowing that he didn't beat. I beat myself. This fight, man, I'm healthy, train hard, been mo more focused and determined than ever. I got a good, great girl by my side, keeping me focused, supporting me the whole way. You know, I'm doing all the right things. You know, I got world-class champions to train with every day I step in the gym. I have world champions to train me, to train with me, training partners. Frank's coming out of the woodworks, training with me as much privately as he possibly can because he's got his own gym, well, SBA, our gym, still my gym, a uh, family and a job, and he's making time to help me. Drax there for me every day. Professor Brandon's there for me every day. I got my teammates. Like, man, 155 class has a hurricane coming at him because, man, I'm going to mow through everybody. And Mike B is the first one in my wake. He was talking crap after he beat me last time. I saw the video, didn't quite appreciate the things he said. 
I've had one run into him. Uh, he tried to shake my hand one time. And I was like, no, I don't like him. You know, I respect the fact that he's a tough fighter, and I'm not gonna let that go to my head. Like he's a tough fighter. This guy's gonna come at me. He's tough, and he's up there as far as the Houston rankings. He's a guy I need to beat, but I, I don't like this guy with the passion. You know, the only thing that I can say is he's tough, and I respect. His, his fighting abilities and him as a fighter, but as a person, every, every ounce of my soul needs this win. I need that part of me back. I need to beat this guy. I don't, I just, I just need, I gotta, I'm gonna hurt this guy. I'm gonna hurt this guy. I'm coming for him. I'm ready. Everything's healthy. My hands are good. My ribs are good. Oh, it's gonna be on. It's gonna be on.